everyone, today I'm gonna to be walking you through how you can design and 3D print your very own studded and ribbed massager. Well, it's actually a foot massager that you would typically find over in something like Target or one of these other Walmart or something like that. This one here was $15 that I bought, which I still think is kind of crazy because it's just a piece of large plastic here that's ribbed and studded. But what's even crazier is the one that I was specifically looking at was $30. The best part about all this is it'll take you all of maybe five minutes to design, and then you can start 3D printing your very own variation of this. Now, the whole reason why I'm doing this or even picked up one of these is because I've recently started running heavily again and I have plantar fasciitis, which is just simplified. It is extreme pain in the bottom of my feet. And I need something like this to help try and massage those sore points in my foot and help stretch out the muscles and tendons and whatnot that you have there. Now what we're gonna do is hop into Nomad Sculpt and we're gonna start a new project. More than likely you're gonna end up with a sphere here that you can just draw on or do anything like that. But we're not gonna actually work with the sphere. What we wanna do is come in to the one of the top menus there and we're gonna click on the add button at the top and we're gonna click on this cylinder option. Once we have the cylinder option added in, we can actually click on the little icon here, the very top um, ball there, and we can start dragging this up and down to create our cylinder-like shape. So once we've got our cylinder shape in place, what we're gonna end up doing is primarily using a tool called radial symmetry. And to enable that, you're gonna come up into the symmetry menu up along the top. You're gonna to make sure that symmetry is enabled on the object that we're about to edit. Now for me, what I'm gonna be doing with this particular shape, and you're probably gonna to have to just play around with the options here, is I have the X plane disabled, I have the Y enabled, the Z disabled, and I've cranked up the Y radial to about 10. You can play around with eight or whatever it is that you want, but about 10 here is gonna give me a whole bunch of different points symmetrically all around this cylinder here. So now I can come in and with the move tool in place, I can start adjusting the middle here and pulling that out a little bit and along the top here to make that a little bit wider here. And as I'm adjusting this, you'll notice here it's adjusting the top and the bottom, which is really cool because I have the plane set to the Y axis here. So it's copying anything that I'm doing on the top to the bottom as well, as well as going all the way around, uh, around the Y axis with that radial functionality. So from here, what we can do is before I start adding any further details to this, I'm just gonna play around with the overall shape. So here I like more or less like this. I want the two ends to be wider because I want it to actually roll on the ground and not have the, the center get caught or anything like that. So this is looking overall a pretty good shape. So before I go in and add any detail, what we're gonna do is come into the top menu again, and I'm gonna come under multi-res here, and we're gonna click subdivide, I don't know, two, three, I don't know, four times? Sure, four times. This should give us a ton of geometry to play around with, and then I can further uh, subdivide this afterwards before we export it out. So here I've got a very cool looking shape. I mean, in theory, I could just run off and print this, but again, I want this to have some sort of ribbing and studding to it as well. So now I'm gonna come into my brush menu here, and instead of just using the typical brush where if I come in and draw here, it's gonna extrude up, which is, you know, it's pretty cool. What I wanna do is subtract in. I'm gonna start adding some tracks into this. So here you can really get funky with this as well. So here I'm just more or less playing around with how I might want this to actually work. So here I'll just come in and I could do something cool like this, or we could, you know, come in and do basically do anything that you'd like with this little, uh, little menu here. So here I'm gonna try and come in and do something maybe straight down more or less and I'll carve this out just a little bit more. So it's giving again that little ribbing action right there that we were looking for that will nicely feel across as you're rubbing your foot over it. And then with that same tool, the brush tool, I'm gonna go from subtract, turn that off to now it's gonna start pulling up on our geometry. So I can start coming in here and start adding these little studs by just making a little circle action on this. And this is just a really fun, simple way to come in here and start adding these little bumps that our foot is gonna end up rubbing up against while we're working 
uh, this all over our uh, foot, rolling it on the ground. You can offset these. You can basically just play around with this however you'd like. And once you get it to a place that you're you know, fairly comfortable with, we can actually go through the process of exporting this out. All right, so I ended up playing around with this just a bunch here off, off screen. And this is where I ended up with just modifying that same set of geometry of just pulling and pushing using the very basic move tool and then the brush tool to add raised points or to subtract areas from the print. And then you can also use the smooth tool to help go over and smooth anything out as well. And before you run off and export this for 3D printing, what I'm gonna typically do is come up into one of the top menus there for the resolution. And then along the top is a decimate option. So here I'm gonna decimate this by half, 50% and it more or less looks the exact same here. It might look a little bit more blurry. Again, it's not like an, a figure or a sculpture or anything like that that I need super high amount of detail. I'm just trying to re reduce the overall structure to this so it's something a little bit easier for our 3D printers and our printers and the slicers to handle. And one thing that I'm gonna make sure to do before exporting this out is to make sure that the top and bottom are perfectly flat. And to do that, I'm just gonna recenter my object by clicking on the front menu cube in the top right hand corner. I'm going to select the trim tool here and then I can select the rectangle option and then I can draw a rectangle along the top which if I give it a second here it should trim the top and the bottom for us to give us a nice flat plane. Then we can get the file exported out and then sent over to our computer for slicing. And while these are printing, I want to say a big thank you to Elgoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elgoo Neptune 3 Pro that I'm printing the first massage roller on. And one of the biggest things that I love about this 3D printer is not only that it prints amazing and the price point is just, again, ridiculous, but that it's so quiet that I can be standing here recording a video talking with you guys and it's not even that loud compared to almost every other 3D printer that I've ever used. This thing is just super quiet and basically all I'm hearing is the hum from the fan. And if you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's other products, you can definitely find links to those down below. And fingers crossed we start seeing more of the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus and the Max available and in stock here soon. And after about 10 to 11 hours, we now have our own custom foot massagers that we 3D printed ourselves. I ended up printing one of these on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro and the other on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus. And I tried scaling them so that they'd be about the same size as our original roller that I picked up from Target. And I'm excited to try these out. They feel nice and durable and strong here, even though that they're printed in PLA. I think these are gonna hold up nicely here for me able to actually rub my foot all over. Yeah, it kind of sounds gross. I did also run off and print two other variations of the exact same models. So this one right here, I originally printed in PLA and then I went off and also printed one in TPU. So it's got a little bit more of a squish to it. It's a little bit softer but I'm still not quite sure if it's gonna be stable enough or just sturdy enough for me to actually apply enough pressure on it for it to work properly. I also went off and printed this same version here that's the studded one, just slightly narrower. I thought this one was kind of just too bulky, so I uh, left it at the original height that it is, but just slimmed it down slightly and then went off and reprinted it. And let's test these out real quick. This first one here is from Target. Yeah, those little notches definitely dig into the bottom of your foot like they should. God, it's painful, but good. Now here's one that I designed and printed myself. Ooh, it's definitely a lot smoother than the Target version, but it's got that really sharp ridge right in the center that's digging into the bottom of my foot. We also have my own studded variation here. <laughs> this is right in line with the one from Target. Oh my God, it's, it's painful. It's so painful. Now let's try out the TPU print. Definitely squishier than all of the others so far. I can really start digging into this with my heel, which might be a good thing for some of you out there if you're looking for something like that. Uh, I wish it was a bit stiffer though. And finally, we have this rainbow slimmed down. <laughs> I, think, I think this is the winner. This is the winner right here. Oh my God, this hits everything just right. Oh my gosh. 
The clear winner for me in this design print and challenge process here was definitely the slimmer studded roller here. This thing worked so incredibly well. It was very similar to the version that I bought off of Target. Definitely doesn't weigh nearly as much but I was able to apply a ton of pressure on this without having to worry about it splitting or breaking or anything like that. You could even potentially hollow this out and put a hole all the way through to also save on even more material. And the best part about all this is based on the estimates, this was only about a $2.50 print versus the $15 that I spent on this roller. I also wanna say a huge thank you to all my amazing Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making projects like this here on the internet. Hopefully this was helpful for some of you out there. If anything, check out the radial symmetry functionality in Nomad Sculpt. It's super easy and fun to use. You could even use this to make your own vases that you could run off in 3D print. And if you end up designing your own little foot massagers here, definitely tag me and uh, let me know because I'd be interested in potentially printing those out and testing them out to compare against mine. And if you're interested in printing some of my files, I'll have those available over on printables for you to download and print for yourself. Or you could even follow some of the other videos that I made here previously about making silicone molds from 3D prints and make a silicone molded version of one of these. Could be a really fun project for you. Hey, thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see you next time.